Hey everybody, JJ here, and welcome back to the ACP, excuse me, the ASUS PCDIY live stream show. Um, happy to go ahead and kick things off again. Uh, we're at the end of the week, of course, Friday. Hopefully, everybody is having a, a positive and productive uh, Friday, and hopefully, things are ending up on a good footing. And uh, you guys are getting ready to have a good uh, and en hopefully an enjoyable weekend. Uh, hey, Felix, thanks for joining us here on the stream. Happy to have you here, man. Thanks for uh, joining us here. So good to have you here. And of course, for everybody checking us out here on YouTube or checking us out on Facebook, thanks for. For joining us on the stream and if you guys are new uh, well uh, happy to have you guys here so if you're not aware essentially what we tend to cover here on the PCDIY live stream is going to be pretty much all things related to ASUS and PCDIY so everything from our latest uh, generation of hardware products to of course insights and updates uh, resident to any one of those products as well as a whole lot uh, surrounding of course a lot of the different things that we're doing with the community with partners and a whole lot more and another big part of it is, of course, helping to show off your guys' builds and setups uh, when we dive into the PC DIY Builder Spotlight. So uh, with that, guys, let's go ahead and get ready to kick things off. We've actually got a good amount of updates this week, uh, ranging from some really cool uh, giveaways and some prizing opportunities I think a lot of you are going to be really excited about. Uh, we've got a couple of new products, including some uh, new mini PCs. We've got a new monitor. Um, and uh, we've got some other kind of just general availability and announcements and updates. So with that, guys, uh, give me one second here, and we'll go ahead and get ready to kick things off here. So uh, first things first, I want to go ahead and actually touch on something that uh, has been, I think, uh, around in terms of ASUS and ROG for a pretty good amount of time. Uh, many of you may or may not be aware of it, but we have something that we actually call internally the ROG worldview. And so uh, the ROG worldview, you might have seen there in kind of a little bit of the intro uh, image that we had, is essentially um, kind of the mythos and uh, kind of the concept behind everything that we do from kind of the ID and the design that is part of ROG. And so uh, if we take a look right here, you can see uh, this is a little bit of kind of the worldview where we actually have characters, there's an entire story, there's a specialized kind of design and aesthetic that goes into it. And this has been weaved into our products over uh, really the last number of years where we've uh, slowly begun to integrate different elements of the worldview throughout different types of product launches across not only our component series of products, but also our system related products. And now as we're getting ready to end out kind of the year as we move in, um, you know, from 2021 and going into 2022, and we're also uh, getting ready to celebrate ROG's 15th anniversary, um, there's also, I think, something pretty exciting that we've been working on, which is developing, I think, even a deeper narrative to the ROG worldview, which we call ROG Saga. And the ROG Saga really helps to kind of add in a lot more depth and detail into the characters, the world, and kind of everything that um, is is ROG. And so uh, let me go ahead and share some of these cool things with you guys. And you guys can hopefully uh, give us some insight and, and let us know if you know this is something that you think is interesting and cool and dynamic. Um, you know, we spent definitely quite a bit of time on it. So let me go ahead and uh, show you actually first and foremost, uh, the page that we've got right here. And I'll go ahead and link this in the chat for you guys too. So don't worry about that. Give me one second here. And uh, Okay, here we go. So uh, this is actually the ROG Saga website. We just launched this, this site, so it's brand new. And there's going to be a lot that's on this site. Um, it's really going to kind of go into a huge amount of detail regarding kind of all the different characters, um, kind of their you know, their, their stories, uh, their background, um, kind of a timeline in history, what actually led to kind of this uh, cyberpunk dystopian type future that we have, um, you know, the heroes, um, you know, they're kind of the, you know, what they're fighting for, um, you know, and a lot of kind of the subtle, I think, dynamics that make for really kind of interesting story. Uh, if you're not aware of all the actual ROG characters within the ROG worldview, you actually see a breakdown of them. Uh, of course, uh, tried and true, the, you know, the guy that kicked it all off with Horseman, Seven, Akira, um, Go, Omni, new characters like uh, PKD, um, they're all detailed here. You can actually click into each one of these little modules so you can actually find out more about each one of the spaces that we have. And if you guys have kind of checked out things like the um, the RG wallpapers, a lot of what you see in the RG wallpapers are linked into these pieces. Um, and you'll actually also see kind of the montage videos that we've released um, earlier in 2021. We released the actual formal kind of ROG music video. It's an awesome video. I really love it. If you guys haven't checked it out, um, you guys should definitely check it out. It's really cool. Um, but uh, the latest one is going to be right here. So let me go ahead and actually pull back here and I can actually uh, show this to you guys here. 
give me one second. And uh, actually, wrong one here. So this is actually kind of the little saga storyline, and uh, there'll be a kind of a there'll be a burger there'll be a kind of a, a more and more information as kind of over time we kind of flesh this out more. But you'll be able to go ahead and see kind of the information um, and kind of really the the history and, and everything around it. And so um, along with this kind of kind of updated primer in terms of the RG worldview and RG saga, there's also uh, been two separate videos that have been released for Horsemen and for Seven, which also will kind of give you a little bit more information into, you know, their backgrounds, who they are, kind of what is maybe driving a little bit of them and also laying a little bit of the foundation to kind of make it more interesting to keep seeing where the kind of the story evolves. So again, if you guys are definitely interested, um, you know, make sure to go ahead and check it out. Let me drop in the links here in the chat. So if you guys do want to check out the RG saga, and everything around it, um, you guys can definitely check it out. So there it goes. I have dropped it into the chat. Hey, Mr. OC, uh, thanks so much, man. I, I appreciate the kind words, man. Um, you know, I've been lucky enough to be with ASUS pretty much almost since the inception of ROG. I, I'm celebrating my 15th year with uh, with ASUS, and so it's been really exciting to be able to see literally us go from having one product, um, you know, one motherboard that launched it with the crosshair to now literally ROG really kind of being, I think, the de facto PC gaming brand where, you know, we've pretty much got components um, and systems pretty much across the entirety of the ecosystem. And we have, I think for me, the most passionate fan base of PC hardware enthusiasts out there, bar none. I don't think any other company comes close to the commitment and the passion that I see from you guys. Um, and that's something that I think part of the reason why we want to even spend time to continue to develop and flesh out kind of this whole worldview, this story, this narrative, and listen to your guys' feedback as we continue to evolve, um, you know, the design, the features, the functions, and the products, and so much more. So hopefully you guys um, will get the opportunity to check this stuff out, check out some cool videos, and, you know, ultimately just find out a little bit more about kind of this world that we're creating um, in part, and actually in big part, to you guys. So thank you guys so much for supporting us over these uh, years. Uh, hey, Mr. OC, as far as any kind of uh, products that may or may not be uh, potentially under designer development, we can't talk about anything. But as always, man, make sure to go ahead and keep it tuned here to the streams. Um, and if you're not part of our PCDIY group, then make sure to go ahead and join us in the group. It's in the description. Um, that's the best place to be up to date as all the kind of uh, products that we're coming out with will be formally announced or teased. So you'll find out kind of first and foremost before anything else happens there. So um, with that, let me go ahead and also just drop in uh, the videos. Uh, that have also been released for Horsemen and for Seven. So again, if you guys are kind of aren't familiar with um, Horsemen and Seven, uh, those are two of the most popular characters that we've had in the kind of the ROG worldview. Um, you can't actually even get figures for them. We do have a Horseman figure that's available in the ASUS eStore. And I think the Seven figure may be available. I know it was only offered initially as a limited release and it was paired with the ROG Z11 chassis, uh, but I do think we'll probably be coming out with it. But um, don't quote me on that. I'll double check on it if it is something you're interested in. But uh, of course, like I said, we have Horsemen and uh, we've got Seven. So these are two characters and we now have kind of their like uh, dedicated trailers, uh, you know, and, and videos that you can check out if you want to find out a little bit more about those characters. So let me go ahead and drop those in the chat for you guys as well. So give me one second here. And we've got Horseman. And I'd love to know what who's who's your guys' favorite character. Do you guys have a favorite one of all the different characters that we uh, have in terms of the ROG worldview? All right, guys. So that is ROG Saga uh, update there. Okay, very, very cool. Uh, next up, let's go ahead and uh, talk about uh, just an, a minor update that we've had in terms of a product page. I know for a lot of you that have kind of been tracking the different types of motherboards that we've been launching recently, especially with the quote unquote X570S or the passively cooled chipset refresh on the X570 side, we have gone ahead and uh, updated our microsite. So let me go ahead and just show you guys what that looks like in case any of you are interested in kind of finding out an easy way to be able to compare and contrast the boards. It's always kind of one of the challenges that I think a lot of people have is like, how do you help to kind of easily compare the different motherboards? So um, this page actually does help to do that. It kind of gives you a lot of key breakdown of um, important information that we have as far as kind of features, functions, design specifications. Um, you can see that they're actually broken down here in terms of the different series. So the ROG Crosshair series, ROG Strix, Tough Gaming, Prime, ProArt, and Pro. Um, so 
you can kind of see all the information. And this is something that I worked with our product marketing team on. You can see right here that we actually have a full kind of downloadable table. So if you do uh, click this download button, you'll actually download a PDF. And the PDF does have like a side by side comparison chart. So you can actually see kind of all the different models and kind of compare, you know, which board might have something like dynamic OC switcher or what's, uh, you know, the VRM design implementation or what's the wireless implementation or what's the LAN or the number of USB ports. Um, so it's a great way to just kind of visually be able to quickly go through and compare and contrast the boards if you're interested in building on, um, you know, an AMD based platform from Asus. Um, I think it's a great um, tool that we have available. So hopefully you guys will find that of interest. And let me go ahead and just uh, share that link in there as well. Uh, thanks. Um, I definitely make sure and uh, feed that back to our team. I definitely agree. I'd love to see, uh, you know, even more stuff from Horseman. Although I say now that we have a Horseman figure, I'd love to see an Akira figure. I mean, Akira's just got that really cool stylized kind of design. You know, of course, he's got the katana. I mean, I think he's cool. But Omni is really, really cool, too. I mean, all the characters have kind of their own kind of identity and I think present a very different kind of look and feel that's really cool. And I think that's one of the cool things is that they all have a different vibe. And that's actually gets into the little bit deeper narrative, the kind of the ROG worldview where we wanted there to kind of not necessarily be kind of um, a defined kind of quote uh you know, visual that would uh, be consistent across all the units. It's not like necessarily you want them to be identical, right? Because just like all of us are different, you know, we wanted to be able to have uh, a breadth and depth to the characters. Some of them are larger, some of them are smaller, some of them are, you know, more apt in terms of being kind of in line with physicality as opposed to technology, right? They, they're they very much just like real world people in that regard. And so I think that gives a good foundation to kind of building uh, a character set and, and a worldview, which is what we've been trying to do here with the RNG worldview. But um, thanks, man, for the feedback. I appreciate Appreciate that. So that is an update there in the uh, X570 landing page there. Okay. Um, next up, I think we've got something that I know a lot of you are probably going to be very excited about, and that is going to be when it comes to uh, a giveaway. So we've actually been working here um, with a couple of different communities to do a couple of different things. So the first one that we're going to be talking about is the Buff Your Game giveaway. So this is actually one that we're running uh, in collaboration with PCMR uh, and their Reddit group. And so the really cool thing that we're doing here is that you have the opportunity to win some really, really sweet hardware. So let's go ahead and actually show you what this is all about here, guys. So let me go ahead and open up the page for you guys. And um, I will make sure to go ahead and link this in the chat as well. So no worries there. So give me one second here. Should be this page. Yep. Okay. All right, guys. And so this is the, the Buff Your Game. Uh, it is a worldwide giveaway. Uh, normally here with the ASUS PC DIY channel and our group, our focus is on our North American audience because uh, I and of course ASUS North America, uh, we're based out of the United States. And so generally for most legal purposes, we are generally restricted to only doing giveaways for the US and Canada. Uh, but this is helping to be coordinated by our global uh, headquarters team. So the great thing is any user pretty much globally uh, will be able to go ahead and enter this and have the opportunity to win. You do wanna make sure of course and read through the terms and conditions to be able to make sure um, all the different aspects in terms of qualification um, are, uh, you know, accounted for and that you um, do essentially have awareness regarding. Um, but you can see right here, um, we've got some pretty sweet prizes. Uh, we have an RG Strix 3080 Ti OC. It's pretty much the cream of the crop when it comes to a high-end gaming graphics card. It's absolutely just a monster when it comes to performance. It's cool, it's quiet, it's fast, and it looks amazing. Um, so I think it's a fantastic graphics card to be able to have as far as our first place prize. Um, we have, of course, our tough gaming graphics cards really built again to a, a high standard. Um, both of these are produced using our auto extreme production uh, process, which means that of course we have machines that go through and actually do all the component placement on the PCB boards and then go through an advanced um, quality check analysis to verify the actual production of the boards. And then that gets combined with so many other aspects to be able to provide you the class of cards, which you guys can consistently see uh, really help to offer an outstanding experience when it comes to our graphics cards. So uh, we've got a tough gaming 3060 Ti card. Uh, we 
then have also a Z590-A gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. Fantastic motherboard. Looks really sweet, too, in that silver and kind of white colorway. Um, I'm really digging that. Um, and that's going to be for the overall kind of best response. So you can see right here, we're just asking you for your chance to be able to provide some feedback. Um, and uh, there are some kind of specific items that if you kind of contribute, maybe feature ideas or different things along those lines, you can also uh, get entered in here for you can see different types of pricing as opposed to just overall response. So the response would be making sure to check out our product page, give us kind of insight in terms of the feature function design aspects of the card and what you really like um, about the cards. Or if you have points of feedback, we'd love to hear those as well. Um, you can see right here, we also have some alternate uh, giveaway opportunity with a uh, Tough Gaming RTX 3060 card, um, and then an ROG Thor 850 watt, and then also big and beefy, very cool ROG3, uh, excuse me, uh, ROG Ryogen uh, AAO, the first generation version, which still is very cool unit with a nice cool OLED screen there. Um, great for cooling, you know, Intel or AMD based CPU platforms. So you'll see that there's a Gleam applet. Uh, pretty much you just go through, go through and click each one of those items and you can go ahead and get entered uh, for this giveaway. So overall pretty sweet and it looks like what? In total, one, two, three, three different opportunities there to win a graphics card. So. Um, hopefully you guys uh, will enjoy that. Best of luck to you guys. Uh, we're happy to be able to, you know, tr try to do our best to be able to work with the community and be able to do cool giveaways like this. So uh, hopefully you guys will um, take part and I wish you guys the best of luck. Hey, Robert, thanks so much, man. Happy to uh, happy that you uh, appreciate that. So that covers us there. So let me go ahead and keep moving things along. Uh, next up, we've got actually another collaboration. And so this is one that uh, has been really cool and we've seen a huge a positive response from the community uh, pretty much uh, for the last number of years that we've been running it. Um, so um, we have a long history of working with Linus and Linus Media Group, um, You know, great um, technical media and uh, we're excited to continue our kind of long-term collaboration that we've done with them in launching now the next generation, the 2021 edition for ROG Rig Reboot. And so if you guys aren't familiar with ROG Rig Reboot, um, it's pretty sweet. It pretty much is giving you guys the opportunity to win an entire system. Um, it is pretty awesome. And for this year, I know that Linus, of uh, course, things may always change, but uh, they're looking to actually um, have users come back and be able to actually visit the actual uh, Linus headquarters and be able to complete the builds with awesome Asus hardware with Linus there and ultimately be able to uh, win an entire system. So we're really excited to continue to be a partner with uh, Linus and being able to give back to our amazing community of users. And it's pretty straightforward. All you need to do is again, uh, just head over uh, to the respective sites. So let me go ahead and link this for you guys. One second here. And uh, formally, I think it kicks off today. So uh, drop that in the chat there and I'll share this guys. All right, guys, here you guys go. Um, so you can see right here, um, this is now, like I said, uh, something that we've been running for a number of years. This is the fifth installment, pretty straightforward. Uh, there's, of course, a little primer video that Linus has gone ahead and already posted that gives a little bit of insight in terms of what you need to do. Pretty much the main item is you need to create a video. Um, uh, it needs to be under 60 seconds. Uh, you post it to YouTube, talk about your current rig, whatever kind of state the rig that right might be in, and really kind of help to pitch and provide your creative take on why you should be selected to win the ROG rig re reboot. Um, so you can see definitely some examples Examples in prior years, and you can see people how they've been, uh, you know, ultimately just uh, super excited to be able to get some amazing hardware and some amazing systems, and be able to have the experience of being able to build it uh, with Linus and his team. I think is a really unique and really cool opportunity. So um, just check out the links and the information below. And uh, best of luck to you guys. Uh, do keep in mind that this is a little bit different though compared to the um, Buff Your Game uh, giveaway that we just talked about, which is a global-based giveaway. This is gonna have, of course, more limited terms and conditions. So just make sure to go ahead and check the terms and conditions for qualification in terms of entry for that. All right, guys? Hey, Kevin. Uh, yeah, no, definitely. Um, I actually remember that. I remember doing a couple of different spots um, back uh, with with Linus and his team uh, for the WAN show. And I definitely agree. It might be actually interesting to, to go back and see if we can revisit some stuff. I think especially with um, some exciting things coming down the pipe, um, there definitely might be an opportunity. So uh, definitely 
maybe look to reach out to them and see if we can't maybe do a kind of revisit and be able to, uh, you know, chime in and be able to have some great dialogue. You know, it's been great to always to be able to talk to Luke and, and Linus and the rest of their team. Um, I definitely have had some conversations with them off and on uh, since then, of course, uh, but definitely always look forward to those opportunities. So thanks for your feedback, man. All right, guys. Um, so we got to the ROG rig reboot there covered. So let me go ahead and just set that aside. Very cool. All right. So next up is going to be, let's see here, uh, probably, yeah, UEFI updates, guys. So let's go ahead and just cover those guys. So in terms of UEFI updates uh, for this week, uh, I have already gone ahead and posted them in uh, the PCDIY group. If you guys are not part of our group, I definitely recommend that you do join our group. It's a great place to uh, be able to kind of find out information regarding ASUS hardware, uh, be able to get tips, tricks, and insights, and just ultimately be around a great community of PCDIY enthusiasts. Um, so if you guys are not aware, uh, let me go ahead and just show you here um, what that actually post looks like. You wanna see. So uh, here in our group, you can see uh, I post essentially these updates and, and you'll see all the different chipsets that we do have kind of released for. I have a full kind of breakdown guide that gives information regarding what you want to keep in mind, um, the applicable releases for both Intel and AMD. And we even have a link to a video um, that helps you to kind of go through all the kind of nuts and bolts if you need to kind of just be aware of what do you want to keep in mind if you're updating your UEFI? Um, this time around, not that many of the updates. I think 15 updates in total for Intel and AMD boards, a smattering of a, a few different chipsets. Um, most of the most recent updates have generally been designed uh, for aligning with the upcoming Windows 11 release um, or being kind of the just last series of boards to receive the Agisa update that we've been working on for 400 and 500 series, which just helps to update the motherboards to the Agisa 1.2.0.3 patch C build, uh, which has just been designed for helping to improve the overall USB interoperability experience. So if that is something that you find that you need, uh, you can download that corresponding update and from there, you're good to go. So uh, overall, pretty straightforward. Again, if you want the list, make sure to go ahead and just check out our group. Um, I will go ahead and drop a link in the group as well. So give me one second here and I will do that guys. And we will go from there. All right. And uh, there is a link to the group if anybody wants to check that out. All right. Very, very cool. So next up, give me one second here, guys. All right. Very cool. Make sure to go ahead and just check out our group. Okay, next up, let's go ahead and now uh, get ready to probably talk about a few new a few new products, guys. So we do have a couple of products uh, that we do have that are gonna be coming out that will be new. So uh, first one is going to be a new monitor. It's a new Tough Gaming Series monitor, uh, specifically a 32 inch monitor. So let's go ahead and show you what we got here, guys. This is going to be the VG32AQL1A. Uh, uh, let me go ahead and load up the images here for this guy. Actually, let me reorder this just to make it a little bit easier to see. There we go. All right. All right, guys, so I think probably this is gonna be a pretty popular model, I think, for quite a number of different users. It's gonna be coming in at 429, and really uh, the big benefit uh, for this monitor is that if you're still rocking a, a 1080p based display, this is gonna to help to step you up to really what's gonna become the new benchmark for a lot of users, which is gonna be a 1440, uh, 1440 based display. It's IPS based, um, up to 170 hertz, and does support uh, GSYN compatibility as well as our backlight strobing ELMB and ELMB sync, so it's quite a feature rich based display. Um, I think at the 429 price point for the set of specifications that it offers, it's going to be quite a really solid offering. So I do think this is going to be a very popular display. You can see you got a good range of connectivity right there, including a USB a USB hub that's built in. Of course, you've got your display port, uh, HDMI, and you actually have also 
Um, headphone jack that's also there if you do want to loop in your headphones there. Uh, you do actually have a good range of ergonomic adjustment uh, present on this model. Of course, though, you can uh, go with a traditional Visa mount. So let's go ahead and take a look at the product page. We'll dive into the specific specifications for this guy. All right, guys, so there you can see, again, this is the VG32AQ. L1A, uh, 32 inches, 2560 by 1440, IPS based, 170 hertz, uh, ELMB sync. That essentially is just our backlight strobing technology. It's just a way to help to improve motion clarity in specific types of scenarios. It's not necessarily something you're going to use in every single game, but it's a nice option to be able to toggle on and see if it provides you a, an, an improvement in terms of the experience for motion clarity. Okay. And traditionally, when you normally enable uh, backlight strobing or ELMB, you don't usually have the ability to run that in tandem with adaptive sync. And so that's the reason why we have the word sync attached to it, because you can still run your adaptive sync along with the backlight strobing at the same time. Um, you have G-Sync compatibility here, uh, one millisecond graded gray, so it is a fast responsive PAL, 99% uh, DCI-P3 coverage along with Display HDR400. Now, Display HDR400 is definitely not going to be a, a bright enough standard to really be able to offer the most dynamic and impressive HDR experience, but I think the key benefit that you're going to have is just going to be that it's going to offer a brighter SDR experience where it's just going to be punchier and it's going to have a bit more contrast. Um, another benefit that you're going to have generally is just going to be brighter and you're going to have the ability to fine tune that brightness a little bit more. Traditionally, most users probably are going to be coming from like a 200, 250 nit base display, maybe 275, possibly 300, although 300 would already start to be pretty good, especially if you've got an older display. So being able to have that higher peak brightness just is going to ultimately give you a brighter panel, which is definitely nice, especially on a larger display like a 32 inch monitor, what we have here. All right, guys, um, you can pretty much see all of those key specifications that we talked about right there. Now, uh, one other kind of cool thing here, too, is that you do have uh, adjustment options. So you do have the ability to kind of fine tune that. Um, this is kind of an often overlooked item here, but this is our display widget software. So the cool thing about this is this does give you on-screen display control for the OSD parameters in Windows. So if you want to make different adjustments, um, I like using this to pair this with essentially different presets for different applications. So if I open up my web browser, as opposed to if I'm jumping into a game, as opposed to if I may be uh, opening up an editing application, I can have different monitor presets for each one of those executables. Um, or just if you want to fine tune different parameters, instead of having to physically touch the on-screen display buttons, you can do it through Windows. And so it's definitely a nice level of functionality. If you've never used it before, it's a really cool feature to be able to have. Uh, you then have other things like our Shadow Boost technology, uh, Game Plus, which gives you a number of different on-screen kind of enhancement options. Game Visual, which are specialized presets for different types of game environments. And then, of course, uh, traditional items that just help to improve the experience, like flicker-free operation, low blue light, and whatnot. Uh, you can see right there, as I noted, HDMI 2.0, 2.0, and DisplayPort are all there on the rear. And you do have your tilt, your swivel, and height adjustment all present on this. And as I noted, uh, it does have the visa mount support. So again, IPS-based display, 2560 by 1440, uh, peak 400 nits in terms of your brightness, and then one millisecond, and then 175 hertz. So I think this is gonna be a pretty popular model. Um, hopefully you guys um, will definitely be looking at it if you're looking to jump into a 1440B based option. But keep in mind, um, I will be talking quite about a number of different monitors that we do have in promo right now. So including a number of 1440P. So we, we've we got tons of 1440P monitors. Uh, it just really comes down to, you know, what's your price point? What's the specific feature set and functionality you're looking for and everything along with those. Uh, but we've got quite a number of promos going on for I think in the promo list, I've got 1080p monitors. I've got 1440p monitors. I don't think I have any 4K monitors. Let me double check my list here. Um, 1080p, 1440. Yeah, no 4K, but uh, pretty much, you know, those are the two kind of most popular segments right now. All right, guys. So let me go ahead and keep moving that along. And I believe, yeah, I dropped it, dropped that in the chat there for you guys as well. Let me just see if there's any questions. RG character cosplay meetup. That's actually pretty hey, Gameaholic, that's actually kind of pretty cool. That is something I'll definitely um feedback to our um 
you know, to our product marketing team. That actually might be pretty cool. Like seeing if we could actually have like a little like ROG worldview like section, um, you know, and maybe uh, offer that as a cool way to be able to kind of engage with people and then have cosplay. Definitely the, uh, I think all the characters would really welcome themselves to offering some pretty cool and interesting cosplay. So I, I, I agree with you there. there. Awesome, Kevin. Yeah, man, I'm super jealous. You got that PG279QM, the ROG Swift. I think that's the benchmark in terms of 1440p. It's definitely our highest end 1440p model, but having that be built in G-Sync module, I think does give the absolute best experience when it comes to um, motion processing. Um, I think it's, it's absolutely the kind of the gold standard when you're talking about really, if you care about motion clarity and really offering a really great experience in that regard, especially at those high refresh rates and at higher resolutions, it really does help to provide an outstanding experience. So especially when you pair that in with the GPU, man, that's just a great experience. Hey, um, Cam1, so that's an interesting question when you talk about uh, dim slots, not necessarily working in a board. So I can tell you that percentage-wise, the likelihood of an actual physical dim slot on a motherboard failing, it's extremely low. The percentage rate is exceedingly rare that you actually physically have a slot that's faulty. Um, statistically, actually, the most common point of failure is going to be one of three things. One, actually an installation error, and this is actually probably the most common issue that occurs is that users, um, uh, when they install the CPU, they actually damage uh, the pin or the pad within the CPU. Um, and uh, when either one of those gets damaged, the thing is that you can actually have a functioning system, but if the pin or the pad is actually ha has damage to it or isn't making direct contact, or there's even kind of maybe too much torque and there's causing issues in terms of the pressure mounting, this can affect actually initialization for DRAM. Um, the reason being is that you have to remember that the memory controller is built into the CPU. So the RAM gets initialized through the CPU. And then of course there's the traces that go from the CPU through the motherboard to the slots. Um, especially when you kind of tend to have these drop channels, usually I would say in most situations, it's usually from an installation issue. So um, the best thing you can do is actually turn off the system, remove uh, the actual CPU cooler and closely inspect your actual CPU, closely inspect the socket, verify that you did not damage the pins or the pad. Um, so in either scenario, that's a possibility. Um, the other likelihood uh, could actually just be that you might have dirty contacts on the DRAM. Um, I don't think I have any DRAM right here next to me that I can show, but um, if you, when you're taking a look essentially at the DRAM, you wanna take a look at the bottom portion of the actual board and just make sure that it looks clean. Sometimes, you know, oil from your fingers and your, your hands can sometimes can cause initialization issues. So that's gonna be another thing to make sure of. And then the last one is physical installation. Um, sometimes some users think that they have it fully depressed and really seated and it's not necessarily fully depressed and seated. So those would be my first three recommendations of going through and checking things out to see if that can resolve your issue when it comes to quote unquote two channels not working, especially the fact that you have two channels not working as opposed to just kind of one really makes me feel that it's probably one of those scenarios. And if you're looking for more feedback, of course, you can make sure to join our group and maybe post um, and we definitely help to follow up. We've got a great set of people in the community that can give you some feedback um, or of course you can uh, create a formal service and support ticket and reach out to our service and support team for more um, support in that regard. If you feel that you have kind of gone through steps and you think it might be hardware related, um, they can help to corroborate and confirm your warranty coverage and then help to kick things off from there. Okay. So hopefully uh, that helps you out there, man. So next up, let's go ahead and keep moving things along. So next item is going to be, we've got the ROG desk mount kit. Uh, yeah, it definitely, it could be the seating. Um, so again, um, Chem 1, uh, the seating is very important when you make sure that you actually put the CPU into the socket. Um, there are sometimes users that they it's a little bit loose and when they lock in the, the lever and get it into place, like I said, then that's where an issue can play. And depending on your cooling solution, if it does to use, if you did tighten it using like a screwdriver, sometimes people actually put too much torque. Um, so they actually crank down on the screws and that can actually make an uneven kind of um, pinned, uh, excuse me, pad to pin kind of pressure. So when the CPU is coming down, it can actually get torqued too much. So sometimes you might actually have to adjust it and make sure that it's tight, uh, but it's not aggressively tight. So that is also something to keep in mind. So next up here is we've got the ROG desk mount kit. Um, this is a pretty cool little accessory that I, I know that there's definitely been people that have kind of been wondering about, hey, when's this guy gonna come out? What do you, when is it gonna be available? And um, 
What it is essentially is a specialized kind of adapter uh, that will work with a wide range of our monitors and allow you to essentially just have more clear space when you mount it on your desk. So instead of kind of traditional larger base that we have with our monitors, right? Um, this kind of C-clamp design will pretty much just go right here to the base and you can mount it and then you can have that entire kind of front area free and unobstructed. So it does work with a wide range of our monitors. You still will have um, ergonomic adjustment because the way that our base design works in many of our monitors, you can still kind of uh, lift the monitor because it's not built into that base portion. Um, and this will be uh, coming out pretty shortly. So this uh, module, the ACL01, will be coming in, I believe, at $50, yeah, $49. And uh, let's go ahead and take a little bit closer look and see what it looks like and kind of compatible monitors if you guys are wondering about this. So give me one second right here and I will load this up for you guys. All right. Here we go. So here you can see it uh, rocking with one of our monitors. It did originally ship with the ROG Swift uh, PG259 QNR, which was our ROG Swift 360 Hertz monitor. You can just see how much cleaner it gives you a kind of a desk setup where you can put it at the back of the desk and really just gives you that whole front area where it's unobstructed. So if you really want kind of the most free space, um, this is a great choice for you guys that want to go that route. And you can see pretty much it will fit, I believe everything from like our base kind of uh, entry, 24 inch all the way up to I think 49 inch. Yeah, up to 49 inch. So you can see here from our XG24 series monitors all the way up to the XG49 uh, series. So uh, quite a number of different monitors. You can see 24, 24.5, 27, 32, 34, 35, 43, and 49. So quite a number of different monitors. Um, very simple in terms of getting it uh, installed and there's a full installation guide video. Here's everything that comes inside the box and you're good to go. So this is uh, something actually, I know that we've actually had quite a number of different users that have been asking about, hey, when is this gonna be available? So um, again, we will be releasing it into the channel shortly. So I'd probably say in terms of ref availability, you possibly may see this by the very end of October, but you know, depending on just ETL or logistics, especially as we're moving more into the holiday season, you could see things kind of get stretched out a little bit. So it could possibly move into November, but we are beginning to essentially push this out in terms of channel availability. So um, you know, you can definitely check it out and see if it will be available at uh, any number of different retailers. Yeah, so Cam1, I would double check everything that I recommended to you there. Um, you know, again, I would consider uh, posting in our um, PC DIY group and use the support template. It's under files. It has a specific kind of structure in terms of the information that we request from the users. Um, it's a little bit hard to know when you're saying that you bought kind of a use board in terms of the condition. One of the challenging things is if you didn't check the socket when you purchased this board from a third party, it could have been potentially that maybe the socket might have already been damaged. Um, and that could be kind of a cause or a concern. But ultimately, I would go through the recommendations uh, that I did detail to you and just see if you can get up and running from there and help to confirm um, if everything is working once you go ahead and verify on each one of those points. All right. Hey, Stardust, yes. So because of uh, the way that our base design works, this kit is specifically designed just for our ROG series monitors. So if you're looking kind of for more general um, kind of, uh, let's say, third-party solutions. Um, of course, you can just use traditional VESA mount, but of course, the kind of the design and the aesthetic is gonna be very different. The goal here with kind of the ROG desk mount kit was to offer something that looked really clean and really well integrated. And so that's the reason why it directly leverages our base design, as opposed to with a VESA mount, right? You're not getting it from the bottom, you're getting it from the rear of the monitor and it clamps onto that back portion, right? So it, it does have a kind of a different design implementation. And I think this one is very clean and structured and works really well well for people that just want to be able to clamp something on and have that kind of general up and down um, ergonomic level of adjustment and have it be really just clean and simplified, right? So um, hopefully that answers your question there. Hey, Wild Berserk. Uh, so we do definitely have uh, some plans coming up. We have already released quite a number of um, tough gaming monitors over the last few months and including HDMI 2.1. Um, and we do actually have an upcoming 32 inch 
HDMI 2.1 monitor on the Tough Gaming side. So make sure to just keep it tuned here. Um, as always, we will give you guys the announcements for when we're getting ready to push out those monitors in terms of channel availability. We just gave the recent update for the 28-inch, uh, excuse me, the 28-inch uh, variant HDMI 2.1 monitor just a little bit ago in terms of its release, but we do have a little bit of a larger display coming out for those that are interested. So make sure to just keep it tuned here. All right, man. Hey man, thanks for joining the stream. Uh, happy to have you here, man. So thanks. Hope you're having a good Friday. All right, guys. So let me go ahead and keep moving things along here. We've got our ROG desk mount kit covered. And next up here is going to be this guy, our mini PC. So uh, mini PC pretty is a pretty cool uh, product. You know, it's a little bit of a hybrid in terms of, I'd say, being kind of like a PC DIY related item um, because, of course, it is already kind of a pre-built system. Um, but you do still have flexibility of doing elements in terms of the DIY because we do essentially have bare bone units that we sell with these. So that means that you can customize the storage and you can customize the DRAM configuration to get yourself up and running. And you just decide on ultimately which CPU configuration you want out of the box. Um, so for the new models, um, I'll go ahead and give you guys a little bit of a closer look on this guy hands, hands on here in a moment. Um, but we are going to be talking about two different models, but they're going to look very similar. But one will be Intel based and then one will be AMD based. Uh, so the first one we do want to touch on is going to be the PN62S. And this one will be utilizing Intel 10th Gen Core Series processors. Um, but in terms of the overall kind of design, it will be pretty much identical to this. And you can just see how compact this thing is. It is super small. If I literally put it here next to this microphone, you can see... Uh, here next to the uh, Magnus microphone, that the microphone is actually larger uh, than this mini PC. And keep in mind, um, the performance that we can offer on these units is quite impressive, especially with these generations on the Intel and AMD side. Uh, even comparatively here to my mouse, you can see it's about the size. It's just a little bit larger than the mouse. So it's pretty crazy just how small and compact these guys are. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, just load up some images for you guys, and we'll take a closer look here. All right, and uh, let me also bring up the page here for this guy. So um, you'll get it in a couple of different uh, permutations in terms of the actual overall uh, unit itself. You can see there on the front, you've got your Type-C connection, uh, Type-A connection, a microphone, a micro SD card, power button, uh, and you can also have integrated microphones. It is important that uh, you do check the specifications for the actual e-tailer you're purchasing because there will be potentially different SKUs, different configurations with different types of core specs, okay? Um, but in terms of the overall design aesthetic and uh, kind of the upgradability and accessibility, that will be pretty much standardized across all the models. But for some things, whether you're talking about maybe the audio, the Wi-Fi, the LAN, um, those elements, you do want to double check that the model you're looking at has the specific kind of configuration that you are looking for. You can see there we've got side profile venting. Um, so you get some good airflow. And uh, that's also on the other side as well. On the rear, uh, we do have quite a bit of connectivity. Um, now, may, uh, these models can potentially support either up to three or four actually displays. It, it just depends on the configuration. You can have uh, rich connectivity options in terms of integrated wire Wi-Fi, including Wi-Fi 6 with the latest generation Bluetooth. We do actually have a customizable uh, port on there, which can also serve to give you an additional display port out, which like I said, on the uh, PN62 or on the PN50 or the PN51, um, the AMD variants, that can be up to four different displays that you can actually run from one single unit. So that's uh, pretty impressive that you have right there. Um, the other cool thing here too with the PN62 is the PN62 does offer Thunderbolt integration. So if you do want high speed um, IO connectivity, you have that. And here you can see that as you open up the unit, you have access to be able to install a SATA based uh, SSD, but you can also go ahead and install M.2 based SSDs. And you can also Visa mount these. So you do have a support for that. All right, so let's go ahead. We'll take a look at the product page, but let's first go ahead and maybe um, take a closer look at this unit. So give me one second here. And we'll get that a little bit closer in. All right, guys, so you can see right here, I've got the, the mini PC. This is the, uh, the PN62, but it would be the same for the PN50. So again, if we kind of do a little tour right there from the front, you can see you've got your uh, headphone mic jack combo. You've got your Type-C connection. Uh, you've got your Type-A connection. 
Uh, you've got an integrated IR receiver, integrated actually array microphone, and then you have your micro SD and then your power button. There's the venting right there that I showed. On the rear, you can see all the rich connectivity, HDMI, Type-C with DisplayPort out, DisplayPort, uh, LAN. Um, again, depending on the model, this can be up to like 2.5 gigabits LAN. You've got Wi-Fi 6 on board optionally as well, along with Bluetooth and then two Type-A connectors as well. So um, all you need to do in terms of kind of accessing the inside is you'll see it's very simple. There's just uh, a, a screw right here. I've removed those four, but once you remove those screws, it's very simple in terms of getting access into this unit. You can see that I just pull that off. And there from there, you can see right there, you've got an M.2 SSD. You can install this as a two terabyte. Um, you can entirely install um, you know, pretty much any standard density that you want available. Here's the SATA, uh, SATA uh, port. And here you have two DIMM slots. So you can go ahead and install the DIMM that you want. Um, I'll show you just literally how simple it would be that if you wanted to install a SATA base SSD, um, you can just see right here on the tray, you can line that up and uh, you do want to make sure. So I'm going to show you here as an example, actually installing it incorrectly. Um, but you can see right there that there's holes. You just want to make sure that you line those up correctly. Now you don't have to install um, it with screws because literally this is not going to really go anywhere. It's not going to be moving. So you could literally just have it rest in place like that. And then from there, just get ready and you could slide it in and you, you pretty much would be able to uh, lock in your drive like that and you would be good to go. So it's a very simple installation process. But again, if you wanted to be the most secure, then yes, you would want to use your screws. And you can see right there, that's part of the reason why if you want to pull it out, but it will pretty much allow you to install it in that way. So. Uh, your SATA drive, M.2 drive, and then your two dust sodium slots. Do keep in mind that depending on the memory configuration, that will affect, of course, performance because you need, you need two DIMMs for dual channel. And then also um, the amount of memory will affect integrated graphics performance. So you do want to keep that in mind as well. All right. But that is uh, the mini PC. So let me go ahead and uh, just show you guys right here product page and I'll make sure also go double check and make sure that we don't have any questions here guys so give me one second so here you guys can see this is the PN62 like I said this unit is a 10th gen series um, you can get them in different configurations um, i3 um, i5 or i7 if you actually go here to the specification page you can see right here that uh, you can actually have some pretty robust actually processing abilities, okay? And as I noted here, you can see up to Wi-Fi 6, uh, USB 3.0 Gen 2 type, uh, excuse me, USB 3.0 Gen, Gen 1 uh, type C connectivity along with display port out, uh, the array microphone support, the IR support right there, uh, of course the M.2 and SATA base connectivity along with a Thunderbolt output. And here you can see kind of Visa mount implementation. And we have designed the unit to be quite quiet uh, when it comes to kind of general usage. In most scenarios, you only lightly uh, notice the actual aud uh, the audible footprint. We have also designed to actually keep be mindful of things even like the M.2 temperature and CPU temperature. So there's actually sensors in place that help to balance the actual fan in relation to uh, both those thermal actual points in the system, which helps to actually offer a more sensible level of kind of response to maintaining good airflow and good cool, uh, excuse me, good temperatures for the uh, system under load. Uh, this is also another kind of point that sometimes people forget about is that this port right here does support um, BC compliance. So BC compliance is a higher speed um, in terms of a higher voltage, higher amperage um, that you can have supported through that uh, connection, uh, which would be beneficial for certain types of phones, certain types of tablets when you're talking about charging them from those ports. And there's that configurable display port. Okay. Um, another thing too is that we have actually been working on um, uh, secondary distribution support for operating systems. So traditionally, of course, you're gonna have support for Windows 10, Windows 11, um, but on select models, there will also be validated support for Red Hat and for Ubuntu Linux. So if you are looking to run a Linux distribution, you do have that an option. And you can see here in terms of the idle power consumption, really impressive. Um, on the PN62, it's going to be, you see, uh, 
very much under 10 watts. And then for probably the PN uh, 50 and PN 51, you're probably a little bit closer to, you know, uh, still under 10 watts, um, but it would be a slight little bit higher in terms of the overall power consumption. All right, guys. So that is going to be uh, the PN 62. Um, and in case you're wondering, these all are using uh, the um, U-series processors, so essentially mobile series processors. So as an example, if you're kind of wondering what's the type of performance there on uh, the PN62, which is the Intel model, it's, this is the PN, uh, excuse me, 51, um, they pretty much look identical. You can get that up to something like a Core i7, which would, in the Core i7 uh, model, which would be the 10710U, uh, would be six cores, 12 threads. So you can have a 12 thread 10th gen series processor, essentially laptop level performance there, also with the integrated graphics from that corresponding part, all within a compact system like this. That's quite impressive when you talk about that. Um, and when we actually then move over to the next model, which would be the PN50, uh, the PN50 follow is actually a work kind of being launched alongside the PN51. So the PN50 is using the Ryzen 4000 U series, and then the PN51 is using the Ryzen 5000 U series. Um, the 5000 U series is really impressive in the fact that you can uh, support literally all the way up to 16 threads. Um, the PN50 does optionally support a model that can go up to that high, but the standard models that we're going to have, um, they won't on the fourth, excuse me, on the PN50 don't support SMT, they don't support hyper threading. So you're generally getting a fixed core count. So um, you're still getting that Ryzen uh, architecture and performance, still very capable, um, quite robust, right? But if you want even more threads, and that's where you're going to want to look at the PN51 variant, and you could have like six core 12 threads, or you could have eight cores and, and 16 threads, which is pretty crazy that you could have a 16 thread part um, in, you know, this small little compact system. So really, really impressive. And on top of that, of course, you have the Vega series architecture in terms of the GPU performance within those models. So let me go ahead and uh, quickly just show you guys the product page for the um, PN50. And again, remember, uh, for this model, there are two versions. There's the ones that are using the Ryzen 4000 U series processors, and then there's the PN51, which is using the Ryzen 5000 U series processors. Hey, Kevin. Yeah. So. In terms of the actual configurable LAN port, um, when, uh, that's going to generally be for display output connectivity, but not for LAN purposes. So you, it could be optionally like a COM port, it could be a display port, it could be uh, quite a number of different ports, but not generally focused for being a LAN-based port. But we do have models that come equipped with 2.5 gigabit LAN already on the actual unit. So if that's something you're interested in, then again, uh, you want to take a look at you know something like the PN51. Um, that model will already come with 2.5 gigabits uh, connectivity uh, on that model already. Um, excuse me, no, I'm sorry. On the PN50, you do have a configurable LAN that you can do. So if you want to do dual LAN, um, then you do have that option. And for those of you wondering about what Kevin's question is right here, let me show you a little bit more closely. Um, but you'll see right here, this right on this model, you see right here where this is a COM port, we do have the ability to essentially have a flexible design configuration, but it gets a little bit tricky because depending on the retailer, the depend they will have kind of a different uh, uh, configuration available. So the default model that we're generally shipping out to most channel partners uh, is to enable a four display output configuration on these units. So these units will essentially have four display outputs and that port will not be a COM port, but it will be a display port. Now, you do have the option to potentially have that be configured with a LAN port, but you would actually have to find a reseller that has that specific configuration. Um, or if it's being ordered for business purposes, then of course you can reach out to our account management team and we can see about actually getting that specific model configured for you for that intended purpose. Uh, so yes, if you did want to run a dual LAN configuration, you could do that, but you could also easily just add a USB, um, you know, a USB adapter, we manufacture actually a USB 2.5 gigabit adapter. So if you just want to easily add LAN that way, you can do that and just connect it to one of the rear USB ports on this unit. All right, um, so you can see right here, 4000 U series. And again, if we take a look at the different uh, models, you can see you've got the Ryzen 3, 4300, 4700, 4500, and 4800. And like I said, these don't feature SMT, uh, but the highest end model would give you actually up to 16 threads, okay? 
and you've got the Vega base graphics, and then pretty much the rest of all the key design specifications are gonna be the same that I talked about on the PN62, because they use the same chassis, same expansion, overall same um, IO connectivity. The main difference will generally be, of course, in that uh, CPU architecture and in the GPU performance that you'll have available to you on these models. And again, keep in mind that when it comes to the, um, uh, monitor output configuration. If you are running a lower density and lower memory configuration, that will limit the number of monitors you can concurrently run on this unit. And here you can see that configurable port that we talked about, right? So LAN, COM, uh, display port, uh, all of those are kind of varied options right there. All right, guys. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think actually it's a really great unit. I don't even think it's just necessarily for for like grandparents, but I think for anybody that just wants a legitimate, nice uh, performing PC, you know, whether it's going to be for general productivity, um, for some basic gaming, um, you know, basic gaming is an option right here. Of course, it's not going to be for AAA demanding titles, but especially I think on the PN50 uh, and the PN51, which feature the Vega based graphics, you can comfortably run, you know, a number of different games at 720p, 900p um, at generally low settings, especially indie titles and things like that. They'll look, they'll comfortably run actually no problem at even higher levels. Um, and you definitely have some options. And for tweakers and tuners out there, if they're actually even willing to customize the actual power that's being supplied to the APU through a configurable like utility that you can get in the community, you can actually even increase the performance even further. But um, definitely they're quite robust, especially with, like I said, these using modern um, high-end CPU-based platforms that you're finding from the mobile place products. Um, they can definitely give you some great performance in terms of just, um, you know, like I said, general application use, um, basic video editing, uh, photo editing, things along those lines. It's really not going to be a challenge. So uh, the really cool part is, again, if you just want something that's nice, compact, power efficient, quiet, um, but still gives you a good deal of connectivity. I love also the integrated microphones on the model, which is nice because if you want to use it for kind of like um, virtual meetings and calls, you could pair that with something like our C3 webcam, put that on the top, and then bam, you've got a whole little consolidated unit um, that you can use for general productivity, for online calls, and for kind of everything that comes along with that. And again, you have the flexibility to find your storage array configuration and your DRAM configuration. All right, guys, so that covers us in terms of um, pretty much all the new products that we had uh, to kind of talk about. So again, we've got uh, that new monitor that we have with the VG32AQ-L1A, um, the ROG desk mount kit, and then the PN62S and the PN50. So that's pretty much all that I had to touch on uh, for this week's stream in terms of just new products that we had in terms of an announcement. Um, I did go ahead and let me see if, um, I can pull up actually some of the submissions for the PCDIY Builder Spotlight. But before that, I do want to go ahead and touch on a couple of just different promos that we do have got that we do have going on right now. And right now there's still some pretty awesome promos. I will try to see if I can leave a, a link in the description uh, for those. Most of these are pretty much all active on Amazon right now, but we do have promos that are going on for a number of our different mice, including the ROG Chakram, ROG Chakram Core, uh, the Curious Wired, the Curious Wireless. RG Strix Impact 2 Wired, the Gladius 2 Origin, and the uh, Pugio 2, which is the mouse that I'm using right here. So um, the savings can really actually be variable. We've got models that um, you know are $10, $15, $20 off, some really nice price savings. So definitely I would go ahead and check out these units. On the uh, router side of the fence, we have some really great promos that are going on right now as well. So uh, we've got models like the RTAX 56U, um, that are actually on sale, as well as the RTAX 82U, um, the AX61, which is a, a mesh uh, two-pack configuration, and the AX66U, as well as the RTX AX55U. So let me go ahead and actually just bring up a couple of these uh, here quickly, guys. So I can just show you a little bit uh, in terms of somebody's just kind of interested in kind of getting a sense of what might be some items that they want to keep in mind if they are kind of looking for an upgrade and how that can kind of play out. Okay. So yeah. Um, let me see right here. The, uh, the RTAX 55, say for instance, right now is a hundred dollars and it's normally priced at 130. So it's $30 off. So that's a pretty sizable uh, discount in terms of getting yourself up to a Wi-Fi six router. So this is actually a really solid kind of baseline unit. Um, if you're looking to kind of step into Wi-Fi 6, um, 
you're going to, it's not necessarily going to be, of course, the absolute fastest unit, but if you don't necessarily need super high broad coverage, um, maybe you're only in kind of single floor, uh, single story uh, floor environment, it could work really well for that. Um, it is also going to be what's referred to as a two by two based configuration, which means that there's two transmit for the five gigahertz and two transmit receive for the 2.4. Um, the benefit of essentially higher end routers that are, you're gonna see are more expensive, take for instance like the AX88U, uh, which is also on promo, is that those units will go up to like either by three or by four transmit and receive antennas on each one of the bands. And essentially the higher that configuration, um, that generally correlates to not only give you brighter coverage and faster speeds, but it also can concurrently handle more simultaneous devices. So if you're in a household or configuration where there's even more devices that need to be managed, that's kind of can be a benefit. Um, another kind of differentiation that you'll find between some entry level units and higher end units will be actually in their processing uh, capability. So right here, we can actually see this unit's actually pretty solid. This is a 1.5 gigahertz quad core based processor. Um, you'll find that comparatively to many other units, you might find that they might only have like a dual core based processor um, and they might also have maybe a smaller amount of memory. So going over to these Wi-Fi 6 units are generally gonna give you faster processors, more memory along with these um, Wi-Fi 6 technologies to ultimately give you a better experience. So overall, pretty cool, pretty robust unit. Um, some nice things that you may not know about pretty much all of our current kind of Wi-Fi 6 enabled products is that they do have uh, applications uh, that you can download on Android and iOS for all the setup and all for the, all the management. Um, you can support what's called AI Mesh, which is a really cool way of taking a secondary router and pairing it together to give you more coverage. So if you've kind of thought, I want Mesh, but should I buy still a traditional router? Well, the great thing with Asus is you can do both. So you can still have traditional mesh and you can have a traditional router. And you can see kind of that getting deployed out there. Um, we also do have technologies that we call AI protection. And the cool thing with like AI protection is, is that just with the flick of a button, you can turn on an option and it will automatically protect your devices, uh, regardless of whether it's like a phone, it's a laptop, um, regardless of anything from malicious links. So, so if there's like a link that gets set like in a chat application or you know, uh, in email, you don't have to worry about that potentially um, essentially directing you to a malicious website. Um, it works for free. There's no subscription or licensing costs. It's built into the cost of the router. It's updated continually from Trend Micro, a leading uh, you know, cybersecurity company. And they provide us those links uh, so that the malicious linking can be vetted there. And the moment that that link is detected, it's automatically blocked on that device. So... Very sweet, man. Thanks. Yeah, the AXE 11,000 is absolute beast, man. So that's definitely on the top end of the spectrum. If you're looking for a very high level of performance when it comes to Wi-Fi connectivity, AXE 11,000 is pretty much about as good as it's going to get. Yeah, uh, definitely. Gameaholic, I think that you're right. If you're looking for like a really cool little box for like HTPC HD, and like stream uh, duties, um, this works perfect. Like if you want to run this and then be able to have like apps like, you know, run Netflix, Hulu, um, you know, maybe browser-based YouTube TV, whatever it might be, things along those lines, that would work really, really well, especially from the fact that, like I said, you still have storage flexibility, high-speed-based networking, um, really, really nice configuration options that are available to you. And also the IR functionality is kind of cool too. So I think it would work really well as that. So uh, again, we've got uh, those units on there. The We have the RTX, uh, excuse me, RTAX 55, um, the RTAX 88U is also one that I would definitely check out, guys. This model is one of my absolute favorite models, and I think this one is on pretty good promo as well. Let me double check here. Yeah, the RTAX 88U is down from 350 to 284, so $66 off, guys, for the uh, for the RTAX 88U. And uh, I can show you just gonna, this guy's right here. Give me a second here. So this model is also, like I said, on promo, really, really high performing unit. Um, 
one of the other biggest differences that you're going to get on this model is if you're a very big power user, not only from wired and wireless connectivity, you can actually see right here that you've got a huge number of ports, uh, eight gigabit LAN ports on this model compared to on traditional units, you only have four ports. So this unit is definitely packed in terms of giving you a super high level of performance um, on both wired and wireless connectivity. So a very, very cool model there with the RTX, uh, RTAX 88U. Um, like I said, some other models, we've got the Zen Wi-Fi um, XT8, um, the RTAX 56U, uh, the RTAX 82U, and then the RTAX 68U. Those are all on promo. So let me go ahead and just link those in the uh, chat for you guys. All of these models, like I said, they're all currently on promotion um, on Amazon right now. So you can go ahead and pick them up if you're looking for models um, and you're looking for picking up uh, a latest generation router and just looking to improve your performance. I will drop um, actually a link, uh, excuse me, um, all the different models that we're also currently have on promo on Amazon for all of our mice. So we've got tons of different mice that are currently on promotion as well. So if you're looking to pick up a wired wireless compact mouse, it doesn't pretty much matter. Any single type of mouse that you're looking for, uh, I think we probably have a mouse that fits that mold in terms of on currently a promotion. And then of course we've got a great, Great set of mice anyways, regardless. Um, but those I'm gonna go ahead and drop in there for the chat for you. Um, on the monitor side, we've got quite a number of uh, monitors that are on promo as well. The two main ones that I think I wanna touch on here is gonna be, we've got the VG259QR. Um, sorry, actually not that model. It's going to be, sorry, yes. The PG259QN, uh, which is normally 699. So this is the RG Swift 360 Hertz monitor. Um, and this one, it has been price dropped from 699 to 566. So a pretty big price drop that we have on that model. So I would definitely check out that model if you're interested. And uh, motion clarity, having kind of the fastest overall experience when it comes to a monitor. That is really kind of kind of be a benchmark right there. It does have the G-Sync module. Uh, that is a pretty sweet unit. Um, on the professional side, we also are going to have a, a price drop on the PA27UCQX, uh, which is going to be a mini LED based monitor. It's off by 200 bucks um, on that side. But before I get into the 1440p, let me go ahead and drop uh, in the chat the model right here that I just talked about there for the RG Swift. So this one is on currently on promotion. And then I will also go ahead and drop in uh, the 1440p based monitors that we do have on promotion as well. So for 1440p, um, let me see, I think probably the, maybe the most interesting model is probably going to be the RG Strix XG279Q, uh, which is off almost $40 off right now. So this is going to be 1440p, one milliseconds, 170 hertz, display HDR 400, uh, G-Sync compatible 1440p based display. So I think this is going to be a very popular option for many of you out there. So let me go ahead and drop those in the chat for you guys. If you're interested in checking out 1440p monitors. Uh, a number of these, again, they're all on promo right now on Amazon, so you can check those guys out if you're interested, okay? All right, guys, so that pretty much wraps up everything that I wanted to touch on there in terms of kind of promos that we've got going on. So uh, lastly, let me just see if I can maybe squeeze in a couple of PC DIY Spotlight submissions, guys. So I will go ahead and uh, jump into showing you guys some cool uh, builds, and let's see what we've got submitted for you guys. Now give me one second here to just load up uh, some of our uh, submissions. And we'll see what I got going on. So I think the first up is gonna be uh, Louis the, yep, Louis the Tech Allen. So let me go ahead and get a couple of his images loaded up here. And I want to go ahead and uh, get his submission form up. All right. So let's take a look here, guys. Oh, wow. This looks like a seriously nice build right here, guys. Ooh. 
So we look like we've got some hardline tubing in here. I love the black on black aesthetic right here. So we've got an ROG Strix board we can see. Horizontal mounting in terms of the GPU, my favorite type of mounting. I think it looks the best in terms of complementary to a motherboard. Um, looks like we've got a distro plate there in the back. Oh, very, very nice, very clean. It's really nice. I do like the accents that we've got going on in terms of the cables. I think a little bit of that gray along with the black, I think it helps to give just a little bit of contrast, brighten it up just a little bit. I'm really digging that we also left full visibility there for the ROG eye in terms of the IO shroud. Very clean build. And then super clean management there on the back. Overall, very nice build, man. Let me uh, go ahead and take a look and just see uh, what we've got right here in terms of this overall kind of configuration. So this is the uh, Cronus Black. Uh, three words to describe the build is elegant, sleek, and minimalist. I would 100% agree with that. In terms of the build, we're rocking here on uh, Ryzen 7 5800X on an RG Strix B550-F, uh, an RTX 3070. He's got, um, let's see, 16... Uh, 32 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz memory, uh, Patriot Vibit Steel. He's running two one terabyte drives that are in there. It's all in an uh, Landly Dynamic, uh, of course, in terms of very popular chassis. Uh, 850 fully watt modular power supply. And then um, just black uh, 120 millimeter fans that he's running in there as well. And then some custom braided PSU extensions. And then uh, uh, Bisky water cooling pretty much throughout the system right there. So overall, what was he most proud of? A uh, clean, clean, consistent kind of color execution. And I definitely think it's on point. Very, very nicely done. Definitely, you can see not super crazy in terms of any kind of key aspects, but just clean, consistent, and well executed. And it's definitely, that's kind of my build, you know, something that's just you know, the nuts and bolts are going to be really well done. It's going to look great. It's going to perform great and overall really provide a great experience. Mainly uses it for gaming and streaming. And his actually favorite features when it comes to ASUS boards recent is ASUS Armory Crate for managing his RGB lighting and his devices, as well as um, ASUS AI noise canceling, which is pretty cool. All right, man. Very, very cool build, man. Thumbs up. Definitely like the build. So let's go ahead and take a look at our next build here. One second to load this guy up here. I think the next build is going to be from Chris. Yep, from Christopher. Uh, and I think he did this in collaboration for doing something with Intel uh, Gamer Days. So let me go ahead and bring up our images here for this guy. And hopefully I'm not missing any of the images right here. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, now this is really, I love this, man. This just, oh, I love this blue and this yellow. And actually with the, just a little bit of the contrast that we've got from the glacial board, which is white uh, and silver, I think looks beautiful. And I love kind of that diffuse lighting that we have there at the base. Um, this is a really pretty combination, man. Just Thumbs up, man. Fantastic. I really, really love the way that this kind of came out here. Um, really, really beautiful setup. One of my, maybe my favorite builds that I've seen in quite some time. I just love this color scheme. And also, I'm a huge fan of softer colors like this. And um, this yellow is just about perfect. Uh, yellow is one of my absolute favorite colors along with orange. Uh, I don't see it enough in builds. Um, and it's fantastic to see it here. I think it looks just, oh, wow. We've got two, two, two systems. Look at this. Oh, fantastic. And we got like the inverse color play here. So we've got the uh, light blue, uh, the yellow, the black, and then the white. And then on the other side, we've got the blue, got the yellow, and we have the black. Um, looks gorgeous, man. This is just two beautiful builds, man. And here we can just see, of course, the work in terms of all the prep. Really beautiful in terms of the base, in terms of that diffuse design work there. Uh, vertical GPUs, I'm not always the biggest fan of vertical GPUs, I, especially it's a little bit of shame with the beautiful design work that is present on the glacial board because it has that beautiful full ultra block, but I don't totally get the look and feel that you were going here. Um, and I think it still 
it's fantastic looking and it helps to show off kind of the, you know, the, the fluid and kind of that thematic flow that you're going through in terms of just laying out all your components. So I, I get why you went with um, this type of orientation. Um, I still think personally, I would have loved to maybe see in it with the, with, the, with the horizontal setup, but it looks fantastic, man. So thumbs up, um, credit where credit's due. Really nice runs here um, and not super traditional. I mean, some really nice tight integration in here with uh, the distribution block and how you've got that routed in there, which looks really clean and really well done. Um, sometimes things can get a little bit heavy, so we can see right here in terms of the hardware configuration, we're using our latest generation Z590 based boards. So we've got the Maximus 13 Extreme Glacial, um, an um, absolutely amazing motherboard, one of the most amazing boards that I've ever in the 15 years that I've been with Asus and seeing ROG. It's a true pinnacle of design, um, really amazing board. And then the Maximus 13 Hero, again, an amazing, fantastic board. Both of them just look great. Um, just beautiful work here in terms of the paint. This is a beautiful, I love the Hero too. And I love how here um, you went with, of course, a little bit of different. Looks like you went probably with distilled water and with dye as opposed to the other one, which was actually probably using a more opaque fluid, some type of like pastel uh, type fluid that was present in there. But both of these really beautiful. Um, and I think right here, the Glacial one might, might take the cake for me between the two. Um, I like both of them a lot. I'd love to see what they look like even dark because I can see the lighting that we have in there in the front. And then we also have the kind of diffused undergo lighting. I think these probably systems look fantastic um, and kind of um, a darker kind of a setup environment. And you don't necessarily see all of that there, right? But they're both really, really nice looking, man. Um, so kudos, man. Christopher, amazing, amazing job here in terms of just the time and effort that you put into all of this. Um, it's just quite impressive um, to just be able to see kind of everything that you that you did here. So, man, kudos to you in terms of all the work that you did here. Oh, so I, I was actually missing one image. Let me go ahead and just download this image here and I can show you guys here. Give me one second. And uh, then we will go through his submission form. So um, there was one image that I did miss here. So let me just make sure and load that up. And that was just a little bit of a close-up shot for the block that we've got right there. So here you can actually see the hero board. Really nice, beautiful work there. Those cables just look great. The black and the blue. And then he's got the Corsair dims. And of course, you can see the vertical routing. Really, really nicely done work, man. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, let me actually put it there with the side by side and we can take a look here. Um, so. so Christopher Butterell uh, is the builder here and this was actually done uh, for Intel Gamer Days. Uh, the actual words that describe the system, custom, heavy and powerful. I think it does that, but man, um, just really clean and well executed as well. So um, let's see here. Dual system, too much to list in terms of the core components, a lot going on there. But uh, as I noted here, we're using the Maximus 13 Extreme Glacial and then the Maximus 13 Hero. And then we've got different CPUs, both uh, uh, latest from Intel. So 11900K and 11700K, and then a 3090 Tough Gaming Graphics Card, and then a 3080 Tough Gaming Graphics Card. Uh, he's most proud that it's, everything works, um, which I definitely think is a, is a positive thing, right? When you're building these type of systems, right? Um, the overall kind of color scheme was just wanting to have some alignment with Intel in terms of kind of the blue, and you can definitely see that. So I think that that's really complimentary. As a little kind of sidebar point, even though we're using RG hardware, it is kind of cool that blue is also the corporate color for Asus. So I think it kind of works out well there as well. Um, Anything that he would actually change is the loop layout. So that's really interesting that he said that he would change the loop layout. I'd love to know what you would want to do in terms of the loop layout uh, if you were to change things up, man. Hey, Dr. Cordy, uh, what will the Asus ProArt X570 be um, on Amazon? I believe that the pre-listing already went live on Newegg. We actually linked that in last week's stream. So it was already in back order, but you should already see essentially listing coming up in the not too distant future. So just make sure to go ahead and keep checking um, Amazon as well as other retailers, like like I said, Newegg, and you should be seeing listing in the not too distant future. Um, I don't know if right now the creator board is still listed as far as a back, or, uh, back order uh, purchasable on Newegg, but it, be, it was uh, last week, it was already still present there. So you might want to go ahead and check that out. But uh, we are working to go ahead and roll that out in terms of channel partners to update their availability again. So you should be seeing it relisted in the not too distant future there. All right. Um, 
Overall, how much time did it take them? Eight weeks in terms of the overall time. Um, if that's for both systems, that's still really impressive. Two months, uh, considering that, you know, that's not collectively the amount of time, because of course, you're not do we're using every hour of every day to work on these systems. That's still the amount of work that I see here, just in the paint alone, the layout, getting the tubing and everything done, um, the fit and finish that we see here, man, kudos. And definitely you can see that there's a lot of work there. Um, and his favorite aspect of ASUS hardware is definitely the quality. Definitely, and I would agree with that, man. So thank you so much. Fantastic. Overall, a really, really uh, great builds, man. Uh, just some of my absolute favorite builds that I've seen recently. So man, kudos to you. Some fantastic work. Yeah, no problem. Um, and uh... hey, man. Uh, yeah, thanks. Z77, it's pretty straightforward. So um, if you want, all you need to do is actually just head over to our PCDIY group. And uh, when you're part of the PCDIY group, you can go ahead and just go to the little submission form. And when you go to the submission form, then you can go ahead and submit your build. So it's actually under our announcement post. So I will go ahead and put the link there in the, let me see if I can put the link in the chat. Give me one second here. There you go. So I've gone ahead and put the link in the chat. Make sure to go ahead and check that out and you'll find the link to the PC DIY Builders Spotlight. So um, yeah, it doesn't matter. It can be a new system. It can be an old system. It can be micro ATX. Um, it can be your first build. It doesn't matter. It can be an upgrade. We, we don't have any kind of specific requirements outside of the ASUS hardware requirement. But um, beyond that, I look forward to your submission, man. So thanks for asking. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and just see if we got a couple of maybe other builds I can get up here in time, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and download these on the fly. So it's gonna be a little bit of a work in progress. So give me one second here. All right, so next one we've got is gonna be from Cherry Systems. So let me go ahead and get these images here and uh, we'll go ahead and share this build. Give me one second to just get these downloaded because I didn't have these downloaded beforehand. So apologies guys on that side. Um, I'll just go ahead and download these quickly here. Thankfully, I'm on Wi-Fi 6 and I've got fast internet, so it's not uh, too much of a strain for me here. So give me one second and I will get these loaded up here. Oh, this is pretty sweet. Okay. Looks like we've got a Ryogen 2 in this system here. And of course, we've got the very popular Landy Dynamic. Uh, chassis, which of course is very commonly used right now amongst many, many builders. All right, guys, so let me load this guy up here. All right, so here we can see, got O11, got vertical mount for the graphics card, RG certified edition version of the chassis. That's cool. We've got an interesting kind of contrast going on here with some black and some white components. Now this is where I'm always torn. The GPU is uh, vertically mounted um, and RG Strix cards, we designed them to look good vertically mounted because there is diffused lighting in the back there from the uh, RGB light bar. But I think the RGB light bar is a stronger uh, visual identity. And I think that also when you vertically mount the card, especially if you have the card out in the front, as opposed to propped up against the motherboard, um, it does actually kind of create a little bit of a jarred perspective that you have just kind of this focus on the card as opposed to kind of a cleaner symmetry. So ideally, actually, I prefer the mount to be closer into the board if you do go with the vertical design, because I think it creates a little bit more cohesive look. But this is also why I tend to prefer personally a horizontal based design, because I think that it creates actually a better level of depth perception between the top, the middle, and the bottom of the motherboard. And it has a little bit of a stronger, I think, visual kind of continuity. But, um, you know, ultimately, PCDIY is up to each builder and what they kind of like. And so there's definitely no right or wrong way outside of functional. Um, so let's go ahead and keep taking a look here and see what we've got. Here we got out with the side panel off. 
So we got the Ryujin in there. Looks like we have some G Skill Royal Trident memory. Uh, Ryujin 2, which is our new uh, second generation version of the Ryujin. We were the first actually manufacturer on the market to release a cooler with an integrated screen. And this one now updates it to a massive 3.5 inch uh, screen. So it's a very, very big uh, display that we have on there. You can see he customized it. I believe he's a system integrator. So he's got his builder information that's in there. We've got an ROG Strix board that is powering uh, this system here. And overall, you can see all the hardware in there. So we've got a Thor power supply in there, the ROG Ryogen 360. Um, we've got the ROG Strix uh, X570 e gaming version. So that's the first version. Then we've got uh, Strix uh, graphics card in white. And then we've got a whole bunch of fans in there in white as well. The interesting thing is you went there with the white fans and the white fans, because they're more reflective, give you a little bit of a kind of a brighter vibe than, of course, black, which absorbs kind of the surrounding light and gives you kind of a more focused, pocketed light. Um, so it does give you a different kind of vibe here. Um, and it's an interesting choice that he kind of went this route. Uh, I wonder why maybe not going with maybe something like our Prime Series or the ROG Strix B550 um, board uh, for the motherboard to keep it kind of white and white. Um, but overall, I, I never mind actually like a black and white contrast. I think it can kind of look cool and I think it does work here. Overall, cool setup, man. Uh, it's very, very interesting. All right, so let's go ahead and Check out, I think we got probably, I think one more I can go ahead and get in here, guys. So give me a second. Yeah, we can definitely do another one here. Oh, this is kind of a cool build. All right, let's see what we got here. This is gonna be from, from Mike. So let me go ahead and load this up here. All right. And Mike, here we go. All right. <laughs> Very cool, man. Hey, thanks, Connor. Uh, really happy that you have kind of taken a look there in terms of kind of the ROG Saga idea. Um, yeah, I mean, we're really excited to continue to kind of flesh out the history and kind of the depth of the narrative regarding the characters and kind of the entirety of the worldview. There's a lot of really cool information in there and a lot of the work that our ID team and kind of the conceptual team has done in terms of developing a depth and narrative to the characters, the environments in the world. I definitely think it's really fleshed out um, and we're going to continue to kind of evolve it. And I think it's cool to be able to kind of have this undertone that ties into the design and the development of our hardware, but also with a really cool, interesting kind of narrative of characters, which just adds a whole nother kind of richness to the experience um, for kind of our fans and for the community. So thanks for your feedback, man. Appreciate it. So um, let's see here. We've got this system here from Mike. Yeah, from Mike right here. Uh, so let's see what we got. He would call this uh, Snowflake Black Ice. And then the three words that describe this, the system are a clean budget powerhouse. And this is gonna be using our Prime Series motherboard. It's very cool. Here we, again, we have the kind of the black and the white kind of comparative narrative, right? I think it actually works pretty well here. Some really interesting choices here on the fan uh, design too, kind of the grill layout. Cool open setup, and that's really kind of uh, common here when you see that you're working with this chassis. Good cable management, well done. You get a lot of credit there, especially for the number of fans and everything you've got tied in there. And then we can see with the RGB lighting off, very clean, well executed, nicely done there. And I think you made the right choice. I'm Part of me is like torn. I don't know if like I would want to go with custom cables that might be also white to kind of complement the lighting um, and kind of the rest of the white components. But I think the black almost fades ties into the other black components that you have there and they kind of actually get a little bit lost where I think if they had them in white also, they might become more visually kind of immediately identifiable. So I'm not sure that if I would want to actually go that route. So I think black might actually be a good choice. And I like the dual tone color that you went there with the dims as opposed to being RGB dims. Um, 
again, you know, some people might prefer that, but it's a tough call to say. But um, overall, a, definitely a cool setup, man. Uh, let, let me finish taking a look here. So we've got an RG Prime Z390 series board, uh, Tough Gaming 3060 card. Um, this is in the mini um, O11D. Uh, 9900K, 32 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z memory, uh, the black and white non-RGB. Uh, we've got Corsair fans in there, 850 watt power supply, two terabyte um, 960 drive, along with the two terabyte uh, Western Digital drive. This was his only his second build, which I give you a lot of credit, man, for being on your second build. Very clean, well executed, nicely done. And he's also really happy that it didn't crash. And so um, I give you yeah, definite thumbs up there, man. Um, no overall theme, but I think in terms of kind of cohesive looking feel, it's got a pretty solid looking feel to it. Uh, is there anything that he would change? He changed the, the fan, uh, uh, excuse me, the radiator fans to match the actual Corsair uh, fans that he's got in the system. And I kind of see what he's talking about there, but I don't think that that's critical. Um, I think actually those kind of look well, they look good there. Um, but you know, some people sometimes want to have it kind of very c consistent across that. So I can see if that's something you're looking for. Uh, predominantly uses it for playing games. So Call of Duty, some Black Ops, Warzone, uh, World of Warcraft, and Civ. Um, so overall, his favorite feature when it comes to Asus uh, hardware is uh, the UEFI. It's very easy to use, robust. And he's also really impressed with how cool his uh, uh, 3060 Ti runs. So overall, man, uh, Mike, very solid build. Thumbs up, man, especially for only being your second build. Really well done and really solid job, man. So kudos, man. Best of luck to you with it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, we got a whole other build there in the background, right? So we got this like build right here. And then you can see there in the back, you've got like a huge um, water cooled setup that's running there in the back, right? Overall, I think very, very cool. But either which way, um, that's a nice build. Let's go ahead and see if we got maybe one more that we can jump into guys. And then we're going to go ahead and close things out for uh, today. So we go ahead and uh, see if I can just jump into here and see if let me check here. Let's see. Next submission. This was Mike's. Okay. So what do we got here? Oh, wow. Wow. This is, <laughs> wow. This is pretty awesome. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I think, uh, let's get that. Let's definitely wrap. Let's, let's, let's wrap up the stream with this build. All right, guys. This is definitely pretty cool. Let me just go ahead and load up these images, guys, and uh, we will go from there. So he's coming over from uh, this laptop, uh, and I love that he added in the photo from uh, for his laptop as far as being kind of one of the ways that he upgraded his system. And he definitely went all the way when we talk about he did a massive investment here to upgrade considerably. So let me go ahead and just get his name copied in here. Asteroid X, I believe, is the name for this system here. So give me one second, and uh, we'll finish loading this up here. All right. All right, I got it all loaded up there, guys. Okay, so let's see what we got going on here. Um, hey, Payne, let me see right here. So is it okay to have Dim.2 card in my motherboard, um, Asus Extreme XI-70 without any SSDs in it? I just like the way that it looks installed. Yes, uh, you're 100% okay, man. Don't worry. You can entirely have the Dim.2 installed. Essentially, the, it won't initialize anything active until the drives are actually installed in there. And I agree, it does look cool just to have it kind of installed in there, um, especially on that one where it's got the really nice kind of uh, the the heat sinks on it. So when you add the heat sinks on there, it just looks kind of cool that you kind of have something vertically positioned in there. So yes, you will not damage anything. You don't have to worry about it affecting anything. So you can have that installed. No problems, man. And uh, thanks, man. I'm happy that you're enjoying the streams. That's 100% why we do them is just to be able to help to engage with uh, great users like yourself, our passionate members of the PCDIY community. So thank you, man. 
All right, so let's go ahead and take a look here at Asteroid uh, X's uh, build right here. So this is a pretty pretty cool one, man. So this is what he was running. This was his his first setup, okay? And now he gives us the little kind of segue into moving into a kind of a whole another vibe. So we can see that we've got um, in an open frame system. I'm always a fan of kind of open frame setups and open frame systems, pretty cool. You can see that we've got it on a tough gaming board. You can see he now kind of situated into a whole cool setup that he's got running in uh, this um, kind of setup and build there. It's cool vibes. And we can see that he's definitely a racer. Maybe, I don't know, maybe doing stuff like Forza. I'm a big fan of Forza. I even still, I actually play Asphalt too on uh, my desktop PC too. If I'm just looking to kind of just lounge and kind of relax a little bit. Looks like we've got an ROG uh, Swift series monitor in there. Nice little kind of racing setup there. Very cool. This is it's really interesting. Really interesting fan choice, but really bold. And I like that it has an assertive style to it. You know, sometimes you get systems that look very similar to each other. And I like sometimes knowing that a system has a unique identity. Even if you're not always a fan of it, it's kind of cool to be able to have a divisive specific style to something that you know that you like, even if it's going to be very different than what other people might um, kind of go with. And so I'm actually a big fan of this. I love actually the color scheme too. I think it's a really cool kind of warm kind of color scheme, which is really interesting. Oh, very cool. So here it looks like he further upgraded this and transitioned and we went into an, uh, an ROG Strix series graphics card into this open frame system along with the rest of the build. Very, very cool. Oh, wow. What do you guys think? Which color scheme do you like? Do you guys have the red color scheme or the rainbow color scheme? The rainbow is really cool and vibrant, but I'm I'm feeling this red. I think especially in the nighttime, that warmth and kind of like the power that the red kind of emotes, I think is really kind of cool. I like that vibe, but definitely you're kind of your quote unquote classic uh, RGB rainbow is pretty interesting. But um, I, I, I'm, I'm a fan of this one right here. Overall, very cool setup. And uh, we can see his cool like hardware setup that he's got right there. So let me go ahead and just take a look here and see what his base hardware is. So Asteroid X, uh, three words to describe his system, uh, beast, exotic, and cool. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look here at his spec list. So his spec list is he's got a 5800X in here. Uh, of course, got an AIO, 360 uh, AIO, um, an RG Strix X570-E gaming motherboard. He's running 32 gigabytes of Corsair, excuse me, of Kingston HyperX Predator memory. Um, he's got a Western Digital SN750 one terabyte M.2 in there. Also got another one terabyte M.2 SSD in there and another one terabyte M.2 uh, SSD and then a two terabyte, two and a half inch uh, SATA SSD and a three terabyte uh, mechanical hard drive, uh, an, uh, an RG Strix 3080, a Strix graphics card, all with a core P3 open frame chassis, 1000 watt PSU. And uh, the monitor, he's running a PG348Q, so that's a 34 inch um, RG Swift gaming monitor. So overall, sweet setup, man. It's cool. It's definitely, uh, especially from your first, um, your first hardware that you've got right there, that's a pretty big upgrade um, that you're rocking uh, on that system. So I, I I give you a lot of credit there in terms of the time and effort that you put into kind of getting it all set up and running there. Um, actually, hold on, let me actually, he gave me another picture here. So let me see if I can download this for you guys here. Yeah, he gave us some other shots here. So thank you so much for that. Oh, cool. Kind of got a little bit of a night shot too. So let me go ahead and check that out there. So um, let me also go ahead and see right here. Switch guys a different shot there again for you. Um, the aspect that he's most proud of in the build, the fans, uh, the fan mod on the sides, simply using um, kind of the um, kind of an interesting way to mount them. And the fact he was able to get the graphics card that he wanted was also something he's proud of. Uh, overall theme, just red and black and gray. Um, he would love to be able to get a 3080 Ti and he's waiting to also uh, update uh, possibly on the CPU side. Ultimately, it took him two years to get kind of everything up and running to be able to get to where he wanted to in terms of the upgrade. Uh, mostly uses it for um, Call of Duty, uh, VR games, 
uh, as well. Project Cars 2, okay, definitely makes sense in terms of the racing. And favorite Asus-related features, Asus Aura Sync, um, and just our, kind of our premium quality and our feature set. So overall, very cool, man. Uh, let me go ahead and just last you show a couple of the last cool images that um, I downloaded here for the build, and we will wrap things up here. So give me one sec. Bring that over there. These are a couple of last ones. Yeah, this one. Yeah. And I also want to show this one and this one. Okay. Cool. So here we guys can see a little bit of a side profile shot with them again, kind of where he went with the vertical mount setup. This is a little bit kind of the nighttime shot. That's always kind of cool to just kind of see how it differs a little bit there. So um, actually, sorry. Where is it? There we go. In the nighttime, I always like to kind of see how a system looks there when we don't have as much lighting. And kind of there with all his VR stuff. Overall, cool. And yeah, and he also put the tempered side glass on there. Right? Of course, you can see it without uh, the tempered side glass. Hey, Quartermaster. Um, hey, thanks, man. Thanks for joining the stream, Quartermaster. Happy to have you here, man. Thank you so much, man. And you take care, take it easy, and you have a good weekend. You're catching us here at the very end of our stream. And hopefully, if you're interested in PC DIY hardware, make sure to go ahead and uh, check us out here in terms of any of our follow-up streams that we have. We've got a lot more planned uh, for the next coming month, as well as we definitely move into the rest of this year. And if you're not part of our PC DIY Facebook group, make sure to go ahead and check out our group there as well, man. All right, guys. Um, hopefully you guys had a uh, good stream here. You guys check out, checked out some cool systems and you guys got some good information. So as always, you guys make sure to take care, take it easy, enjoy the rest of your day, stay safe, stay healthy. Um, best wishes to you and yours and uh, you guys have a good weekend. So until the next